Hello, this is Ellie from MaryQuestions.com. Like I did in the last two questions, I'm going to use another NCARB question to demonstrate you how I read and analyze NCARB's ARE questions. In this video, I will solve a question provided in the free NCARB practice exam for the PCM division. I'm sharing this content solely for educational purposes. This question is NCARB's intellectual property and I'm not claiming ownership of it. I highly encourage you to explore NCARB's free practice exams and let's dive in and solve this question together so i can show you my methods tips and tricks when it comes to being a good test taker a new client asks an architecture firm who has extensive experience with multifamily housing projects to design a 500 unit mixed use project how should the firm verify that they will most likely receive a payment for the project check the three that apply as you know, before I move on to the options, I like to highlight the question. So let's do that. In this question, I started my highlighting very minimal. I think the word verify and the phrase most likely are important and I will tell you why as we move forward. But for now, I'm starting small. Now let's move on to the options. Option A says require the client to pay all invoices in full within 30 days or include an additional 1% penalty for late payment. So this sounds like a very definitive tool to make sure that you are going to get what you are owed as an architect. When you get into a contract with a client, this is the language or a language similar to this is what typically you will use as an architect. You need to make sure that when the invoices are being paid and what happens if there's a late payment. So usually there's a penalty. So option A has a very contract like language. I put a question mark because I'm not sure if this is meeting the criteria that I'm looking for because the question says most likely to receive. Now let's move on to option B. Option B says evaluate the client's brand to determine if the client's values are in alignment with the firm's values. This question is about whether the architect is going to be able to receive the payment or not. That's the concern, that's the problem of the question. Option B has a different issue. It deals with the brand values of client and the architect and it says architects should see if they are in alignment. That's an important concern for an architectural firm, I get that, but is it the concern of this question? I don't think so. Evaluating the client's brand has nothing to do with this question or with this scenario. This scenario is more focused on payment. So I immediately eliminated option B. I think that's one of the most obviously incorrect options here. So I had no hesitation there and I immediately eliminated it. Now let's move to option C. Option C says, determine if the client's budget can cover both construction costs and design fees. When I saw this option, it made me go back and read the question again. I know that architects are responsible to make sure that the cost of work and the budget are compatible. But is that part of the scenario? Is that part of this question? Let me go read the question again. It says a new client asks an architecture firm who has extensive experience. So when an architect has an extensive experience in a certain area, then they should be able to immediately assess client's budget and have a strong opinion about whether that's enough or not. So determining if client has enough budget for this project with the expertise that the architect have is going to help architect understand if there will be enough money left in the budget for their services. So if architect wants to verify that they will most likely receive the payment, of course it makes sense for the architect to make sure that there's enough money in client's budget to pay for both the cost of the building and the cost of the design and engineering process. So I think option C is obviously correct here because the question says the architecture firm has extensive experience, so it should be easy for them to judge the client's budget. Option D says require a deposit of 10% of the design fee upfront before beginning services. Here the problematic part for me is where it says before beginning services. This architecture firm and client are not at that phase yet. The client just asked architect to work on this project and the architect is not made a decision yet. The firm is still trying to make a decision, but here 
in this question, we are focused on the process of verifying whether they will receive the payment or not. So requiring a deposit can be a good way to protect the architectural firm, but I don't think we are there yet. And again, like option A, I think this is more like a contract language. So based on the scenario, I cannot tell that this firm and the client are about to sign a contract, right? Nothing indicates that in the question. But option D and A are showing us what might happen in future when these two parties get into contract. Those two options can be good tools to protect the architectural firm. But what I'm saying is we are not there yet. So that's why I put another question mark next to option D and I pointed out that option A and D have similar approaches. When two options have similar approaches, I tend to group them as part of either the correct options or the incorrect options. I cannot say, for example, options A, C and E are the correct options or I cannot say options C, D and F are correct options. Any correct or incorrect group should include A and D together because they have the same conceptual idea. So that's what I mean when I say they have similar approaches. When I move on to option E and F, I see a similarity there too. Option E says, ask architects about their experience of working with this client. And option F says, ask contractors about their experience of working with this club. When you look at option E and F, basically it's the same thing, just one or two words are different. Option E says, ask other architects, and option F says, ask contractors. So both of these options are recommending you to just ask around, right? This is not gonna be a definitive result. Even you ask 10 people and all of them said great things about a client, this does not definitively tell you that you will receive all the payments. It is still most likely. So since the question said verify and most likely, I think option E and F are speaking or addressing that language. They are both attempts to verify the reputation of this client. And like I said, even if we get 100% positive feedback, this does not guarantee anything. It is most likely that we will receive the payment. Since option A and D and option E and F have similar approaches, the correct answer group either going to be A, C, D or C, E, F. So we cannot separate A and D and E and F from each other. And we already established that option C is correct. So we will decide between either group. I think my biggest issue here is that there is no mention of a contract in the question, yet both options A and D are focused on a contract. But on the other hand, options E and F are about verifying, which is stated in the question. And that's why I think the correct options are options C, E and F. I hope this was helpful to showcase you how to dissect the question, how to dissect the options and how to connect the correct options to the question and how to connect correct options with each other and actually how to connect incorrect options with each other. So what I recommend test takers is go back and review all the NCAR free practice exam questions through this lens, through this perspective. Try to deconstruct the questions and the options and try to see this relationship between the correct option or options and the question. I promise you the technique works on a lot of questions. I went through all of the free practice questions and I can see this technique helping you with many of those questions questions. So this is not to replace your studies. This doesn't mean that you should stop studying and just focus on these test taking tips. No, absolutely not. You should continue reading and studying and repeating your notes and solving questions and discussing the concepts with your coworkers or colleagues, all of them. But also when you are solving questions and practicing at home, remember these tips. This will help you to pinpoint the correct answers a bit faster and a bit more confidently. And in the exam, especially when you have no idea about the concept or about the content of the question, you can increase your chances of answering it correctly by remembering these tips and techniques. Thank you so much for listening. I hope it was helpful. 
I wish you the best of luck with your exams and studies. Please subscribe to my channel and until I see you next time, have a great day. Bye-bye.